Hey everyone, happy Monday. Thanks so much for joining me tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. So tonight is our free week. It's the last week of the month. Uh, that week we sort of do whatever we want. And uh, this week we are going to, the first couple days, we're going to work on the Splendid Sampler 2 again. We are working our way through these 100 quilt blocks. I did the math again, meaning counting. <laughs> and we have 24 unfinished blocks out of all of this. So we are... Uh, three quarters of the way through, at least with the block making. I really, <laughs> we need to spend like a, a Saturday marathon on this some sometime just to crank out a few of these blocks because I'm ready for it to be, <laughs> ready for them to be done. But we're going to put in a couple days on these blocks and then we are going to work on the ABC quilt a little bit later in this week uh, for the quilt as you go process. So we're going to start on on that again. Um, the actual quilt as you go process, which we have not done for that project yet. Um, we'll start that process. So awesome. Thank you guys so much. Uh, let's get going for the night. All right, everyone. Thanks again for joining me. So tonight we are working on, uh, the next one on the list, uh, which is my happy place. Uh, this cute little, um, sewing machine block by Pat Sloan here. I'm literally, here's my list. I'm literally just going down. Uh, we used, we started out like jumping out all over the place when we started this project, but now I'm just like, nah, I'm just going down the list. We just going down this list. So we're still in the second column here uh, at my happy place here, but I've been counting. So we have 24 unfinished ones at this point. So after we get this one done, we will have 23. So that's, that's the state of the state of this project. Uh, so this guy is all applique. Uh, we're going to do the raw edge applique for this, uh, which means we are going to be doing our process where we use this seam -a seam light. Uh, we'll be um, using that tonight. And uh, I feel like there's not a lot left in here. And I swear I bought more of this, but maybe this is the more that I bought. So I might have to get like a whole nother thing of this soon. I think I have like two pages left in here, which is, you know, that'll take me a long time to use still. But anyway, so I think um, I'm going to trace all these first just so I can get this template piece out of the way. So the book comes with template pieces. Um, so here's here's the template piece for this. So I basically need to trace every single shape on here. Uh, so the trick of this piece is that there's also going to be embroidery, like hand embroidery on top of all these layers of pieces, which in the past has been very difficult to stitch through all those layers. So what I am going to try and do is that process of using this um, steam -a seam to where I only do the edge of the bigger shapes. I don't do like one big piece. So I'll draw the outline of the big pieces and what I'm considering a big piece is the this backboard and the sewing machine, um, all the other pieces and maybe this triangle, all the other pieces I will just do the full shape because it would be just difficult to cut off, the, cut out the little bit. But that way by only having the outside be like the glued part, uh, we'll just have like fabric to stitch through when we do the embroidery except for like when they overlap. So that'll be a little difficult still, but um, manageable, I think. So that's my first kind of thinking through this project a little bit. Here, I'm gonna move you guys a little bit so I can see the comments. Um, okay, so there we are. Um, all right, so like I said, before we even pick fabrics or anything, I'm gonna just freaking like trace these things. The less I have on my table, the better. I do have the sewing machine out, so that'll be fun to use again. Uh, that'll probably be a tomorrow thing. I kind of think we can still get this done between, like, in two days-ish, or maybe maybe three days tops. Maybe we, we just go till we finish it this week. Uh, so if, we, if it takes three days, then we'll do the um, ABC for two days. I think that'll be fine. Okay, so I don't ever remember if I draw on it. So one, one of the sides of this, um, so just to reiterate what this is, this is double stick 
uh, fusible web. So what does that mean? It means that it is basically like a sheet of glue <laughs> that is activated with the iron. Uh, in this case, it also is sticky. So you can stick your pieces on without them moving around before you iron them. So it's sticky, plus it's heat sensitive uh, to merge um, fabric pieces together. So what we do in this is I will draw this design on uh, each individual piece as its own thing. And then I will put that onto the back of fabric. I will iron it onto the back of fabric. And um, then it'll basically be glued to our pieces. We'll cut those out and then we'll take the paper off, which will reveal the glue basically again. And then we'll put it on our back piece. We'll lay them all out like, like this on our back piece and then use it with the iron again. And it will be glued on onto our fabric. And uh, then we'll sew each piece down and uh, then do the embroidery. Okay, so that stuff I don't think we'll do uh, this week yet. This is actually going to take a little longer than I think. But I'd love to get the pieces done and the pieces fused. If we can get that far uh, this week, then I think we'll be good. So, all right. So because both of these sides are sticky in this uh, light seam a seam too, um, they both are covered with paper. Oftentimes you'll get fusible web and only uh, one side will have paper and the other side won't. But since this is also sticky, uh, both sides of paper on. And I don't remember, I feel like we always draw on the, um, the uh, side with the, the um, yellow lines on, but I always feel like we have a really difficult time pulling the paper off of that side. So I think I'm gonna draw on this side once. Let's just see how that goes. So I have this, you know, half used piece. I'm gonna use that first. So when we're drawing shapes on here, we want to leave like an eighth of an inch edge or so because uh, we don't want it totally lined up with our what we're drawing because we're going to do that by cutting um, once it's on our fabric. So what we need to do now is just draw the lines on here. So this is that big piece. Um, and this is the big piece that I don't want to use. I don't, I, I'm don't want to use this whole piece because that's going to be really hard to stitch through later. And it's wasting, it's wasting, um, the seam of seam. So what I want to do is, um, cut out just the edge. So I might put some more pieces on the inside. Um, so this is actually, this part goes behind the sewing machine, but I still need to like cut a shape. So I, I'm going to just like, I'm just going to extend this all the way across and that'll be my, my piece. I think that'll work fine. All right. And I'm going to just draw like a little dotted line here for myself, uh, just so I know that, okay, that's probably where I will cut on the inside of this. Just so I'm only using uh, just a little, oops, just, just like an outer sort of border. And I think that's usually how, hey Cassie, I think that's typically how Pat Sloan does her, uh, who's the designer of this blog. I think that's typically how she does this anyway. Okay, so <laughs> there's so many pieces in this, it's crazy. So anytime a piece overlaps, you gotta kind of like add, so for example, like what I just did, this, the, um, this board is like behind the sewing machine. So when I place the applique pieces, it is gonna be physically behind the sewing machine. So I, I don't wanna like make the shape up like this because then I have to puzzle piece it perfectly together. I do want to um, go behind it a little bit. So that'll be the case. It looks like for the scissors, um, one piece will go a little bit behind. And like the sewing machine here, we'll put this triangle and, and those, this table and stuff too. But oh my God, there's so many pieces. Like each one of these, like this little guy and each of these three are different pieces. These are all different pieces. Oh my goodness, there's so many pieces. So I'm gonna fit as many as I can in here. Oh, there's like 30 pieces or something in this thing. Oh my God. I, I feel like I've put this design off <laughs> uh, in this process because I was intimidated by just like how many freaking 
pieces there are. But whatever. Gotta do it at some point. That point is now. I'm gonna try and just... Uh, I, I need to remember that I have to leave enough space around these, so I need like an eighth of an inch or so around these all yet. So I'm gonna go to this next one over here, I think. These seem like they're pretty much all the same. So if I like put one in the wrong spot, I don't think it's gonna matter. But again, I'm not I'm not doing it exactly like how it is in the design because I do want that space in between it. This is gonna be a little tricky to cut out, but I think once we get started, we'll be okay. I wanna be able to like cut out this middle and then I can cut out all these other pieces easier. God, look at this. Um I think um this little spool of thread, I think that I can oh god, maybe I can't even see it in here okay a piece of it i'll squeeze in here this is gonna be tricky to like remember what's what in here oh and i probably dang i probably need this to be a, a little bit bigger i'm gonna eh, yeah I, I i'm gonna extend this piece just a hair oh my god this is so little okay because theoretically that will be behind the top and bottom of it, so I do need a little bit of an edge. So let's draw the top and bottom of these. You guys, this is like a quarter of an inch big, these things. I'm gonna get you guys a little bit closer, I think. Hang on a sec, Nero. All right. <laughs> there, maybe you can see what I'm doing a little bit more. All right. Uh, what else can we fit in here? Okay, we got these guys over here. Okay, we got those things. Uh, this is just um, to show where we embroider. Um, so that won't actually be a thing. Same with this line here and like this dot I think are just uh, French knots so that's part of the embroidery and all these little lines are part of the embroidery as well. So we're just concerned with like these thinner lined shapes. All right let's get this scissors. Barely hit the angle it a little. Well, how am I gonna get in here with the scissors? I might have to get like uh, I don't know we'll see how far we get but like this might be an exacto blade type situation, but I, I am gonna try and um do it with a scissor. So I'm gonna extend this a little bit into the other piece, but I gotta like know where the overlap is. I mean that that I won't see forever, but um so we're gonna have to like eyeball this piece a little bit when we actually well, I mean, like, we'll very much be eyeballing this piece once we assemble it. There's so many, like, little overlappy pieces. This is one of those ones that just, I, I don't know, it feels intimidating to me because there's a lot, but I bet you it's one of the going to be one of my favorites. At least historically, sometimes these pictorial looking ones with a lot going on end up being like my favorite and and um I don't expect that at the beginning. Tina said this is gonna be adorable but I don't see it happening in two days. I think the more that I'm putzing around on it, I think you're totally right. Uh it would be so like I said, I think I if I can get this all these pieces used to a background, uh that would be cool. So meaning that means tonight It'd be great if I could cut out all these pieces. Oh my gosh, I should probably cut them out and fuse them in the same, at the same time, fuse them to the backs of the fabric because like, I'm gonna keep track of all this. We still have to pick fabric. So, all right, new plan. I'm gonna draw these onto this paper, then we will pick fabric. And then one by one, I will cut these out and like, 
put them onto the backs of the fabric. So I'm gonna get my iron going. Um, all right, let's keep going here. Uh, ooh, Cassie says I got my package today. Yay! Hope it came came okay. All right, I think I got everything in here. Now we got all this sewing machine stuff. So let's see, where can we fit that on here? So the sewing machine, I think I'm also going to try and um, cut cut it out a little bit. I don't really know if anything is gonna fit in it. This line here might fit, but eh, that guy we might still be able to fit. But yeah, because this seems like a lot of extra bulk. So um, I think we'll just go right there. So all right, sewing machine. This looks like um, this looks like the sewing machine that I'm that I need to get fixed yet. So this is this looks like that uh, ten more that uh, seventies ten more that I have that I can't get the feed dogs to to um, stay up. Like any pressure pushes them down, and then then it, then the feed dogs don't grab it the fabric at all. So it's the one that I've been using for free motion quilting because it works great for that because the feed dogs are down, but I can't sew on it, which sucks because it, it has like um, my zigzag stitch. It has all my other stitches on and I haven't been able to do any of that. Okay, so now th this, I think we should probably extend a bit below as well. So the table and kind of overlap it, I think. Yeah, so the table will overlap it and then this fabric will overlap all of it. We're gonna have to line it up to the top here, but I think that's fine. So, all right, so I'm gonna just kind of draw a dotted line here. And again, I'm, I'm extending it past this fabric. I'm gonna just treat this as a whole thing and then this fabric as its own thing because like I don't want to treat this as a piece and this as its own piece. That seems silly. So we'll do it this way. Okay. I think I got that drawn. I think I might be able to fit. Oh, the other thing we should do, let's let's draw our like kind of interior line. Like our just so we know that we're gonna cut about like this is gonna be um the amount that we put on the fabric so it's not such a solid block. But then I don't know how many other things will fit here. Oh, we might be able to get like some of these feet in there. That maybe that that's the way to go cuz I don't Yeah, that's too tight. This line we can fit down here. Yeah, we'll give it a go. All right. So this line I'm going to try and fit <laughs> This tiny leftover space here. Okay, so we did that. We need this, this, and the table yet. I'm gonna try and get these table legs in here because I think that'll work. This is gonna get so confusing. Here. I think this can fit in there. No, I think I gotta be done with that top piece. Okay, so we got that. Will this fit in the middle here? Uh, sure, fine, we're doing it. Oh, actually, I need I need more border around it, so I'm not doing that. Okay, let's 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 just start fresh up here. I need enough space around it to have like an eighth of inch from this edge and an eighth of an inch from this edge. For me to feel comfortable at least. We probably have like the perfect color <laughs> for this sewing machine. So it's like exactly like um exactly like that cream color <laughs> of that sewing machine. That'd be kind of funny. Because we're doing lots of creams and yellows um for this project. All right, so I'm doing the um the triangle, the little piece of fabric. Boop. 
All right. Oh, Cassie says the, the package was perfect. Thanks so much for the gift and the freebie. Oh, awesome. Ooh, you posted a video of the unboxing. Oh, Cassie, I will have to check it out when, when um, I'm done here. Oh, that's exciting. That's great. Yeah, so you guys, if you watch, uh, we got a few things going on here. So this week yet uh, is the last week for our 40% off embroidery kits. Uh, except for our embroidery of the month, but all the other embroidery kits are 40% off because we will be switching out the fabric. So uh, all our current stock is on sale. That's the biggest sale we've had for our kits. Uh, so that'll be going through the end of the week. Um, and then uh, if you're watching live, uh, you also get a free mystery gift if you spend $20 or more in the shop. We'll just throw the gift in. You don't need to like put it in your cart or anything. Uh, we just check uh, to see who purchased during the live or like 15 minutes after um, you get a free mystery gift. So those are our dealios happening still here. Ooh, knew I forgot. I'm just like checking like, did I forget anything? I didn't do this whole bottom, the whole table here. Ooh, that's kind of big. The, the triangle's getting in the way. Maybe I can angle it. Dang it, no, that triangle is in the way. Boo, I should have um, should have moved it a little bit. I can get uh, your butt triangle okay, this way now. Eh, screw that up. Maybe we can fill it. Get it. Um, well, fine. Whatever. We're doing it right. I guess we're going like like that. Go for this weird fold in my in this seam seam. I kind of want to avoid that. That's like the only spot, you guys, I might have to redo this triangle, I think. I'm going to redo the triangle. I'm going to get, um, I need this thing to go, go here, I think. This table. So I'm going to have to redo that triangle. Boo, that was dumb. What I should have done is put this like right here and then Put those two guys in different spots. I was not thinking. All right, so let's let's redo that triangle. Maybe I can still fit it in here. Let's do the triangle like here. <laughs> so I gotta I gotta like really mark where I don't want those lines. <laughs> this is dumb. Okay. No, 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 don't cut those. Okay, but I think this, I might want to actually cut out the center because that's kind of a lot of fabric to do. So we'll cut out that center of it. I think this guy's fine with doing him. All right, I think that's all our pieces. Oh, Kimberly says, hey friends, wow, 40 percent enough. I picked a great night to drop in. <laughs> Yeah, and we're we're out of a lot of the kits already. Um, and some we just have like two or three left. So it's definitely if you were like thinking about getting any of them, um, now is a good time to check it out for sure. Uh, all right. Okay, this is, scares me a little bit. This is a lot of pieces, but I can get this thing out of the way, which is what my goal was. So I guess I'll I'll leave it. I'll fold it in a way where I can kind of see it yet. Uh, because I guess I'll still need it, but um, let's just get it out of the way. That's, that's throwing it on the floor because I am in this small space um, and I don't really need this anymore, but I might put the extra pieces in. So I'll just kind of get that out of the way. You can go back at the beginning. I clean up right away when you're <laughs> working in a small spot like this, I think. Okay, next up. So I want to pick fabric. So I'm going to kind of use this as a guide a little bit, but our fabrics are, you know, quite a bit different. We're doing the, I'm doing like the blonde quilt, uh, which is, you know, we're using um, white as a background when we, when we can. That's, that's one of the rules. I, I've placed some rules for myself for this quilt. So uh, one rule is, uh, light colored or the the white for the background if there's a clear background an obvious background this one does have a clear obvious background it's the background so um we'll get white oh my god i don't even think 
that's not a seven inch square. That's not gonna work. I do think I have a ton of white in here though. So I just gotta find, looks like I gotta start, start like a whole new thing. So, okay, here's our white. And then everything else is kind of up for grabs. So I'm kind of thinking, let's pick our sewing machine first. And uh, that should probably be like the most bright, interesting fabric. Um, or it should pop somehow compared to these other things, I feel like. Uh, this is gonna be tricky because we are using all pale colors. So we're, it's gonna be difficult for us to get all this nice contrast here. Um, so it is gonna be much paler than this with less contrast. Uh, so that's gonna be like the challenge. Um, oh, this book is uh, the Splendid Sampler 2. There we go. We've been working on this feller for like, oh my God, probably two plus years now. It's insane. So it's a hundred different quilt blocks by like 80 plus different designers. Um, there's actually, this is the second version of the book. There's actually, uh, or this is like the sequel. There's another one called just like the Splendid Sampler and I gotta be one of the designers for, for that. So uh, one of my designs is a block in the first book. And so we just kind of kept, we made that quilt years ago and um, now we're, we've decided <laughs> to jump in and make this second quilt, but it's been years uh, that we've been working on it still. That's why I'm just like, oh my God, we got 24 more blocks. Let's get through it. Um, oh, Kimberly, no, this is not paper piece. This is uh, applique. So we're doing the raw edge applique where we're gonna use the fusible because that's just gonna be, hella faster <laughs> and, I'm, and that's the game I'm playing right now is is speed <laughs> so all right um uh, background so it would be kind of cool like I don't know how we'll make this pop but it would be cool to do like the sewing machine you know kind of like this color because this really is close to you know that that beigey sewing machine. Oh gosh, look at these little pieces falling out everywhere. Um, so I kind of just wanna, let's see what we can get with this as the sewing machine. So I kind of like to plop fabrics down on the background fabric just to kind of, um, just get a kind of mini visual of what it'll look like. So let's just plop this guy down as the sewing machine. So this is the trick, like how are we gonna get other things to pop against this? Maybe by using more yellows? Because we do have yellows. Ooh, this is awfully pretty. This is too small, much too small. But if we could find more of that fabric, this might be all we have left of that, this fabric. That's the other thing at this point is uh, <laughs> we're pretty limited on what we got left over here. Ooh, stars would be cute. Can we do stars as the, the background, um, like the pegboard? That'd be kind of cute. Okay, I like that idea. Let's do stars as the background. Um, not that this like pops really against that, but I think we can still see it. And we'll be outlining it um, with the sewing machine. So uh, um, we'll have an orange, we're using orange thread. So we'll have an orange outline on here when we're done too. Uh, oh, one thing is if you guys noticed when we are tracing these, uh, like the sewing machine, for example, all the pieces are like this, but they're all backwards. Uh, and they're backwards because we'll be putting it on the back of the fabric. So when we put it on the front, it will end up being, um, being forward like this. And I always kind of get that a little messed up in my brain. So I'm hoping, hoping I get it, um, right today. <laughs> kind of thinking, I just, this just like was sitting in front of me here. And I was thinking that might work for the table. This is a little darker. Maybe we can go even darker. I don't, I don't know what we got that's darker. We can go more yellow. But I think that puts like emphasis on it. This feels like boring and brown, I think. I like that. I'm just gonna go with it. Here's the table, the end. Okay, and then the rest, after that, the rest is all kind of like little details on it. So I feel like I almost want to get these out of the way <laughs> just so they're done. And then then like pick the scrappy details. I think that's what my brain can handle right now. So let's let's just do that. The end. The end. So um 
and I'm gonna fuse it right away too. So let's let's start with let's start with this back board. Okay. So how do we do this? First, let's uh, press our. Oh, I suppose we could cut it out. Let's cut it out first. Okay. We have our thickest or our seam a seam. I'm gonna use the nice scissors, I think, for this. So what I'm gonna do, so the backboard is what we're doing first. I'm gonna cut out, uh, so we're not gonna actually cut on the lines. We're gonna cut just outside, like an eighth of an inch or so outside of it. Uh, when we do our final cut uh, of fabric, that's where we'll cut on the line. That's where we need our nice line. Uh, but beforehand, we just need a little bit of an edge. Okay. Now this is also where I was going to cut out the background a little, so I don't know, I kind of have to just like fold this a bit. A little hole. There we go. <laughs> this is why I'm like, man, I should get an X-Acto blade out here. Okay, but let's just see if I can cut out this. So we're just going on my little mini dotted line that I put in. And all these details we can just scooch out of the way for now. They are just in our way at this point. So we pick those pieces. But this is, I think, a nicer way than having all the pieces just laying out everywhere. Because uh, they just float away, <laughs> these little pieces of paper. Because um, they get staticky and stuff too, so they just get goofy. Okay, so. You go over there. Okay, here is this piece. Um, and let's just get, let's get this. You know what? No, one at a time. I can't handle cutting even the sewing machine out because that has all of its little pieces uh, and stuff too to deal with. So let's just do it. Let's get our mat. Um, let's get our fabric. So we need to be, be concerned of front and back here. So this is the back. Um, geez, where is it even to fit on this fabric? And these fabric pieces are all crazy because we've done 76 blocks out of, out of these fabrics already. So this just represents all the other blocks we've been working on. Which is nuts. Kimberly says, hey, only 24 blocks progress. That's terrific. I know. It, I mean, I do feel like, ooh, that's not too many left now. <laughs> but it, I don't know. We'll see. We'll get there. Okay, so let me just see where this would go. I mean, it's kind of like right there would work. All right, so this is where I'm going to place it. Um, so what we need to do now is take off uh, the side, the fabric, or the uh, paper side that doesn't have our drawing on. We need that drawing still, we need to see it. Uh, so let's try and take this other side off. And this can sometimes be tricky with this. Ugh, like stay on except for, like I need it to not come off the other side. Okay, I think we did it. All right, so that's garbage. That's just our protective paper. So now we've exposed the sticky side, which is also our fusible glue. Sometimes on a fusible web, this will just already pre be exposed. It won't have that paper on it, but it just, it won't be sticky. Uh, you'll just like place it on the fabric and then then um, the fusing will happen with the with the iron. But in this case, it's, it's uh, sticks down, which in this part of the process doesn't really matter. But like later when we assemble all our pieces, it's gonna be nice to have like a side, a side sticky and we can just keep moving stickers around until it works out. All right, so I'm just trying to place this on the stars and see now we can stick it down, which is great because it's not fused. I can still actually move it around and everything, uh, but I'm not, it's not gonna fall off um, like a different fusible would. So, all right, we got that on. Let's fuse it right away. I'm gonna fuse it and cut it out. We're gonna just get these pieces completely done uh, one at a time here, I think. Okay, so fusing. So this is gonna get it permanently on the fabric. 
I mean, I guess permanently would be when we actually um, sew it to the back once it's, once it's used. But this is this is pretty much getting it perm the paper permanent on or the fusible permanent on here. So just I don't know, about ten seconds or so. I don't even think the packaging says how long to do it. So I don't know. Their instructions and packaging could definitely use some work, but. Uh, if it's if it's not completely 100% fused, it's not going to matter so much because we'll be fusing it again to the background fabric and uh, um, we'll be sewing it down too. So, all right, we got that fused. I'm going to actually just trim on the outside just because I don't want to save any fabric that has any of this fusible on because this will like ruin an iron uh, accidentally fusing this. On so I I don't even want to keep scraps that have have it on so to help avoid that I'm gonna just like put around the whole piece before doing my real thing so all right we're done with this fabric another reason to do this like one piece at a time is because you know I can keep my area clean all right so at this point once you have it fused on uh, the wrong side of your fabric so like here's the good side here's the wrong side. Uh, now we can do our perfect cut. So this is the cut that matters. This is the edge that's going to be exposed because all these edges are going to be raw, meaning they're all going to be exposed. Uh, as I go through the wash, they'll soften and unravel and stuff a little bit, but that kind of adds the charm of this particular type of applique. Uh, but yeah, but this is going to be the nice clean edge. So this is where I want to cut really, really well. Whereas I was kind of sloppy cutting around the piece, this is the real cut line. So I'm going to really follow those uh, pencil lines now as best I can. All right, cut it straight, straighter than my pencil line. All right, so this is this is garbage. I don't want to keep any of that that has the fusible on. But that's the first side. I think I'll just we'll do that other side that works pretty well. Oh. All right, and now this is gonna be so cute with stars as the like pegboard. Here, you definitely want to be using your fabric scissors. There we go, and one last piece. But you can see, um, it's so much nicer and floppier without having all that fusible behind uh, this middle area. And we're not wasting as much fusible. I should have done this a lot more through this project, but I don't know, you learn as you go. But you can see I'm, I'm going slower and paying attention to my cutting right here. puzzles here so this I'm going in my trash pile uh, so there's our first piece so this is going to be the uh, the back um, where like the pegboard where everything goes on so that's like really going to be really cute with the stars I think so, all right so done piece you can go way out of the way <laughs> next up let's do the sewing machine um because the other part is the table and that's got a bunch of pieces. So, all right, sewing machine. I'm gonna just get you away from these other pieces. So let's just do our like our eighth of an inch around. First, just kind of like really just separate there because I don't, that's in my way. Now I'm gonna do my nicer, like about an eighth of an inch around the piece. But again, this part doesn't have to be clean or perfect. I just need some sort of edge because um, I need an edge over the line so that when I so that that it's stuck to the fabric when I do my actual clean line. Ooh, Kimberly, I did not hear that. Kimberly says that. Is there some like popular iron company that's just only gonna do steamers now? Ooh. I'll have to look into that. 
like Rowenta or something. I feel like that's that's a name I hear a lot for like high end um nice sewing irons. I love my Panasonic though, like my uh my cordless one. Holy cow, that's still like one of my best um crafting sewing purchases. This one's gonna be tricky, cut it out the center, and I'm not too excited about that. All right, garbage. Um all right, I guess we do like that little fold and like cut a little bloop in here. There we go. Get in there. Uh, there. So I'm I'm cutting out like most of the middle of this, like I did the other one, just because it is kind of a bigger piece and. And we're gonna be there's hand embroidery on top of this, and I don't want to be embroidering through all this fusible if I manage. And we gotta cut these other pieces out of it. That's gonna be tough. We gotta cut around them. That'll be a little tricky. All right now. Ooh, this I gotta watch the edge for here too because I need like that eighth of an inch around there. Maybe it wasn't the smartest spot for that, but is this part of the table? No. Oh, but these lines are. I need those. Okay. I'm gonna just I'm just gonna cut that out right away. There. All right, sewing machine, here cut out. Um, these little guys I'm gonna just leave it like that for now. I do need these for the next part though, cause this will be um, for the table. And now that I think about it, I did not extend these. I should have extended these legs a little bit for the table um, because they need to overlap the table a little bit. So I'm gonna just like make these a little longer and that should be good. All right. Okay, you're ready, guy. Uh, you are gonna be made with this. Ooh, and we got all these circles on here. I don't think that's gonna really matter for us. Let's see what would happen if we... Yeah, I don't think it's gonna really add anything. Maybe I'll try and place one on top of the circles, but I think we'll be fine. All right, so again, on the wrong side of fabric, I have done this on accident on the right side of the fabric, which sucks. Then you gotta redo your piece or just live with the back side of the fabric being the look. All right, so I'm just kind of pressing in one little area here. All right, let's just kind of see where this would go. I kind of did like that circle on here, but I don't want to fussy cut that much. Oh, maybe I'll go right down here. Yeah, let's go right there. The puzzles out of the way. I think I have to do that one. Yep. Okay, now here's where we tear off the backside, the part that doesn't have our drawing on. Again, it can be tricky, especially since I took out the center here. Who took that came off? Correct side right away. Excellent. So I think this drawing on the white side and not the line, the line side has been good for us, but I can never remember. All right, I'm gonna flip this over and this is super wobbly, but let's let's try and place it. I don't know, I guess that's maybe good enough. All flat in the right spot. Excellent. All right, let's use that guy down for reals. I like doing this one one piece at a time. Oh, you guys, I'm sorry, I'm way too far down here. There we go. 
So we got it kind of placed here. And I don't know. Maybe that's enough. Who knows? Probably. Okay. Um. So again, I'm going to just kind of cut out this whole thing um, just so I don't accidentally save any bit with the fusible on, and then I can get the rest of this giant piece of fabric out of my hair. It's not fun to cut stuff out when you got all that fabric. I'm excited for this sewing machine. It does remind me a ton of uh, my actual sewing machine, like my the one that I've been doing the free motion on. All right, now I can put that fabric away. I feel so clean during this process <laughs> compared to how, th how this usually goes. All right, so now this is the nice cutting. This is what I got to do really well. Like holding my stuff. This, actual, this piece right here actually doesn't count because the cable is going to be over this little area. But all these other lines. I almost kind of like a little curve this like zoop. this again is going to be that exposed edge so I'm trying to get as nicely cut out as I can in the world if it's perfect but Hey, you guys, I'm going to be an aunt tomorrow <laughs> or Wednesday, Wednesday morning, uh, but maybe, maybe tomorrow yet. Crazy. I'm excited. All right. Oop, let's cut that whole, that whole thing out of the way. Same here, dude. Cut straight up. Can't wait to see what this looks like. All right, so um, I'd like to get the table done yet tonight. We have like 10 minutes or so yet. So we got kind of our big background pieces. So hopefully we can get like all the little pieces done tomorrow. I mean, we don't have to do all that tracing. That takes some time. And like I said, I would love to be able to stick all these down onto our background fabric um, by tomorrow. And if that's all the farther we get, that's perfect. Sticking them down and using them, that, that'd be great. And I think we're sort of on track for that. All right, all these guys are garbage. <laughs> there it is. He's going to be so cute. So um, this is our background piece again. And then this will be kind of overlapping him a hair like so cute. <laughs> this looks just like my sewing machine. Okay, two pieces done. Um, let's get the table um, pieces. So that's going to be these two little guys here and our big piece here beyond this triangle that I messed up. So let's let's do that first. Again, we're just getting like that little edge. All right, so that piece and uh, these guys can go away. And then these two pieces. So let's just get that out of my hair. Arlene says, cute already. <laughs> Agreed. See, that's the thing. Like I said, uh, these always seem daunting, these big, like, pictorial applique pieces, but, like, they always end up being my favorites. Okay, and then right down the center here. I actually could probably just fuse it like that. Let's do that. I can cut those out as is. Oh, that might be easier. All right. Okay, back of the fabric. Got to make sure to do that. And let's see, where do we want these? Can I fit them in here? I mean, Sure. Maybe I go over here. Get this weird piece out of the way. So here and here, maybe. Yeah, let's do that. So 
So I'm going to just press this fabric in that spot. It's weird on the front. Just prep those pieces, and then we got to pull that paper off. There. And I want to make sure that there's no, I'm not like using any puzzles. I want to get those out of the way. All right. You can squeeze it right there. So let's just get that back paper off. Oh yeah, it's way more easier to pull this stupid yellow side off. Okay, we gotta remember that from now on, I draw on the non-marked side. Okay. Like so, and you can go just like above right there. Okay, let's right there. Excellent views. <laughs> Thanks, Sylvette. Sylvette says, Congrats on becoming an auntie. Uh, that's that's uh. <laughs> That'll be tomorrow, so they'll be going in during during the live tomorrow. But I'm, I'm, you know, thinking nothing will happen during the live, so I'll still still probably be live. But I'll keep an eye on my my uh, text messages or whatever. So uh, if I leave abruptly tomorrow, that's that's why. Oh, Cassie says congratulations to you. Oh, good vibes. Uh, says I've been one since age twelve. Oh, it's amazing journey. Oh, that's nice. This this is going to be the first. Well, I guess the first one on our side of the family. Um. Uh, my brother's wife, who's having the baby, her they have um. There's a there's a. Uh, um. A niece on that side of the family, but that that's it so far. <laughs> For. For all the families. Oh, and I guess um, you know, my other brother's girlfriend has um some nieces. But my immediate family, me and my two brothers, and and John too, we don't have any any nieces or nephews yet, so this will be a first for us. All right, that piece is out of here. Getting rid of all them pieces. All right, so I'm just gonna separate these. Okay, let's. I did fuse these already. Yeah, they're warm. Got talking and I forgot. I'm just going to trim off these first. I think just going all the way through. Easy enough. All right. Now, this looks like I threw it kind of wobbly, so I'm going to try and cut it straight. Because we can have a wobbly table. Nothing wrong with that. This will be my parents' first grandkid. I think they're excited. Well, no, excited, but you know, extra excited because of that. Oop. Okay. There's our little tabletop. Let's get our let's get our whole scene here again. Let me get these pieces out of the way first. All right, and at this point, um, once we cut these edges, we kind of got to like, you know, be gentle with them too. And I'm already kind of not, I'm already kind of tossing them around, but uh, because these are the final edges, right? So we don't want to like totally mess those up. So this will overlap the sewing machine a little bit there. Oh, I like this kind of pinky, pinky brown color. Ah, <laughs> it's totally my sewing machine. I love it. Okay. Let's get the little feet. This is already annoying how many small pieces there are, but um, I think actually what I might do is let's just, uh, I know we have to cut, maybe I should cut this fabric. We'll do that tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow I'll actually cut this fabric out to size uh, and then I can just sort of start placing things on it. 
without like really placing them on it. But then I won't be like moving like all these little pieces around. I can kind of just like place down here where it's sort of going to go um, and just let it be like that because tomorrow is going to be the day of tiny pieces to keep track of. Here. Ooh, I'm gonna cut my finger off. Excuse me. This might be like a hold things with the tweezers and cut. I think we're good. Okay. This piece and this piece. So when we're ready to fuse it to the back fabric, that's where we'll pull the secondary piece of paper off, and then that will stick, and then we'll fuse that on. So let's. I'm gonna. Um, oh yeah, they go about right here. So. Tuck under, and this gets tucked under as well. That tabletop we're gonna put on the top. This is garbage. I'm just trying to get that out of my way right away so I don't mess it up. But there we go, you guys. <laughs> it's silly. So this does kind of blend in uh, quite a bit to the background. Like it's hard to tell um, the contrast between here. I think this is a much better contrast, like the table to the sewing machine than the sewing machine to this background. Um, but again, this is gonna be outlined with orange um, thread. So I think that'll make it pop. Um, also, I just wanna do it anyway because this does look like my sewing machine. I could have maybe gone darker with this background thing. But I like the stars, so we're just dealing with it. Um, I think it'll be fine. Once we get the, once we get all the other stuff in and uh, like I said, that orange outline, uh, from the orange thread that we've been using on this project, I think that's going to make that separation between between the backgrounds. So awesome, awesome, you guys. Um, okay, so I'm gonna just scooch this guy away for now. Uh, all right. <laughs> so thank you guys again for joining me. This has been super duper fun. I feel like, again, when we work on this, I feel like we haven't done it in so long. Uh, it's actually been kind of fun to do like the little applique pieces. I think that's, uh, I don't know, it feels good working on it again. Even now, even with all these little pieces, I feel like we got at a good place today. And I think it was the right move to um, do it piece by piece <laughs> versus having all this massive fabric everywhere and then having all these little pieces everywhere. I think that's good. Oh, Arlene says, happy, happy aunts Eve. <laughs> yep, I'm excited. Awesome, you guys. All right, so I will see you tomorrow night at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Um, pending baby shenanigans. <laughs> but I think that'll be probably an into the night uh, Wednesday morning thing. So we'll see. Uh, but yeah, um, so there's that. And uh, yeah, check out that 40% off sale. It's going to go to the end of the week. Uh, it stops on October 1st, which is coming up, which is crazy. And uh, also uh, during this live or about 15 minutes after, if you order $20 or more in the shop at penguinandfish.com, uh, I will throw in a free mystery gift for you. And all, the, all of um, these orders are going to be going out tomorrow as well. So they'll be you real soon. All right. Thanks again, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Have a great evening. Good night.